Legal and Ethical Issues An ethical issue is one where there's no single right solution that applies to all aspects of an issue. Recent scientific and medical advances have raised a lot of bioethical issues that have not been present before because now we can offer so many more choices for treatment to save lives or discontinue lives if the person is shown not to be eligible for a healthy life. Bioethical issues. I mean, think of the potential ethical issues with the following, and there's many examples in the textbook. We have the Human Genome Product or Project. It identifies if a person is genetically predisposed to a certain disorder, and if so, should we continue that pregnancy? Prenatal genetic testing allows parents to make decisions about continuing a pregnancy if a child might have congenital or genetic disorders. Surrogate motherhood, where a contract is made with a woman to carry a child for someone else. Should this really be an option? And treatment for very premature infants. Treatments can keep extremely premature infants alive at a much younger age, but they're going to be in the hospital for months and they can experience lifelong medical issues. Think of the cost involved. Abortions, big topic. Spontaneous abortion is a loss of pregnancy before 20 weeks. We also refer to this as a miscarriage. We have different types of spontaneous abortions. We might have a threatened abortion where the woman has bleeding and cramping, but there's no cervical dilatation and it might resolve. Inevitable abortion is bleeding, cramping with dilatation and there may be some leakage of the amniotic fluid. In other words, it's going to happen regardless of what we do. Incomplete, some but not all of the products of conception have been lost. Complete, all products of the conception have been lost. A missed abortion, we have a fetal death, but it is not spontaneously expelled. An induced or medical abortion is the purposeful termination of a pregnancy. The type of technique will be that's used is dependent on how long the pregnancy has been going on. We do have a therapeutic abortion where there is an intentional termination of a pregnancy for medical reasons. The guidelines that allow a therapeutic abortion is if the pregnancy would gravely impair the physical and mental health of the mother, the child born was likely to have grave physical and mental defects, the pregnancy was the result of rape or incest. There are different ways to perform an abortion. We do have medical techniques using a medication. There's surgical techniques we can do an aspiration, we can do a D and C, or a D and E. It's important for nurses to be compassionate and non-judgmental with these women. Post-abortion, whether it was spontaneous or induced, it's important for us to monitor the bleeding amount and the characteristics. This includes any tissue or clots that are passed, monitoring the vital signs and blood counts. And then we need to educate on potential complications, including vaginal rest, which means no intercourse, no tampons, no douching for at least one to two weeks, and contraception. Another issue is infertility, which is an inability to conceive after a year of unprotected intercourse or an inability to carry a fetus to term. It does affect approximately 10% of women in the United States. 
Potential risk factors do need to be identified, both men and women. We look at behavioral factors, occupational and environmental factors, and emotional factors. Specific to the women, we look at their age, their uh, PCOS, chronic medical conditions, hormonal imbalance, gamete transport, or implantation interference. Specific to the men, we look at sperm viability. Did they have cryptotorchidism? Uh, is there too much heat to the scrotum? Did they have mumps after puberty, STIs, etc., or interference with sperm or deposition? Evaluation will begin with the least invasive and complex and progress to the, to the more invasive and complex techniques. So we review risk factors. It begins with a thorough history and physical exam of both partners. Usually the first test will be a sperm analysis and the second test will be a postcoital exam to help determine how that sperm interacts with the cervical mucus. How do we manage infertility? Well, appropriate therapy will base, be based on underlying causes. How long has infertility been going on and the woman's age? Again, we begin with the simplest and least invasive and progress towards the more complex as needed. Different interventions can include medication administration, which could result in multifetal pregnancies, hormonal replacements, surgical procedure, insemination techniques, advanced reproductive techniques, and alternative parenting childbirth options. Clients that are undergoing evaluation and treatment for infertility might feel guilt or shock, isolation, depression, and most definitely stress. It is stressful on a relationship to sexually perform on demand and have intercourse often. It begins to take on a clinical and mechanical tone rather than the desired traits of intimacy, love, and support. It's also expensive and can cause significant financial strain. Honest and open communication is vital and it's important for nurses to reinforce the client's coping skills or assist with exploring new coping strategies. Surrogacy is when the other woman carries a couple's fetus to term it may use the couple's egg and sperm. It may use the surrogate's egg and a couple's sperm. I recommend that you look at box 4-8 in your textbook at some of these ethical situations.